Good afternoon. I was told there would be 30 of you. This is more than 30. So, um, but we're glad to have you here. I wanted to touch base with you because a lot is obviously going on in the world and I've been out of town. So we wanted to just give you the opportunity to know what we know. And, and um, so I'll um, give you some updates obviously on Vienna and Unifil and then we'll open it up to any questions that you might have. I had a very productive visit to the IAEA in Vienna this week. Director General Amano and his staff were gracious and very generous with their time. He and his team are total professionals and true experts in their field. They have a very strong verification program in Iran. I was pleased to hear about all that they are doing. Having said that, as good as the IAEA is, it can only be as good as what they are permitted to see. Iran has publicly declared that it will not allow access to military sites. But the JCPOA makes no distinction between military and non-military sites. There are also numerous undeclared sites that have not been inspected yet. That's a problem. I have good confidence in the IAEA, but they are dealing with a country that has a clear history of lying and pursuing covert nuclear programs. So we are encouraging the IAEA to use all the authorities they have and to pursue every angle possible with the JCPOA. And we will continue to support the IAEA in that process. Another important issue we are dealing with now here in New York is the renewal of UNIFIL uh, in South Lebanon, which is expected to expire the end of this month. Bottom line is UNIFIL is not doing its job effectively as we need it to. We talk a lot around here about prevention of conflict. It's true there has been no conflict in South Lebanon since 2006, but that's not the same as peace and security. Since 2006, there has been a massive flow of illegal weapons to Hezbollah, mostly smuggled in by Iran. That is not prevention of war, that is preparation of war. UNIFIL is supposed to work with the Lebanese armed forces to stop the violations in Resolution 1701, or at least report of them. Yet we have not seen one single instance that UNIFIL is doing that. To prevent the next conflict, UNIFIL, ha UNIFIL has to get more active in stopping <coughs> weapons to terrorists. That's why we're trying to do, and that's what we're trying to change in the mandate renewal. We are not looking to change the mandate itself. We're looking to include language that clearly directs UNIFIL to do what it should have been doing for years. Those who object to that need to explain why they are prepared to give terrorists a free hand to arm themselves and destabilize the region. Look at what Hezbollah has already done. They have committed assassinations and acts of terror inside Lebanon. They have sent thousands of fighters to Syria to prop up Assad and terrorize the Syrian people. They openly threaten Israel. They are an Iranian proxy. Hezbollah is a terrorist organization that is very destabilizing to the region. It's time the Security Council puts teeth in the UNIFIL operation. Now, I know our friends in France have concerns. We are thankful, and they do have many troops in UNIFIL, and there's a long history that they've had with Lebanon. We respect that. We've been in discussion with France for weeks, and we'll continue those discussions as we get to the mandate before it expires. But while I do appreciate the French perspective, what I find totally baffling is the view of the UNIFIL commander, General Barry. He seems to be the only person in South Lebanon who is blind to what Hezbollah is doing. General Barry says there are no Hezbollah weapons. That's an embarrassing lack of understanding on what's going on around him. You don't need to see the numerous intelligence reports that document that Hezbollah arms build up, that the Hezbollah arms build up to know that it's there. Hezbollah openly brags about their weapons. They parade them before TV cameras. The Secretary General's reports have confirmed this. For the UNIFIL commander to deny it is, has any proof shows that we need to have changes in UNIFIL. And so with that, I will open it up to any questions that you have.
Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, Margaret Bashir from Voice of America. Uh, in Washington, we just uh, saw the executive order on Venezuelan sanctions was just signed. For the first time, it reaches the oil sector in Venezuela. Uh, could you talk to us about what you think the impact of these sanctions will be and how you hope they will change uh, President Maduro's political calculus? It's a strong message for um, the people of Venezuela, and it's a strong message to Maduro. We are not going to tolerate the dictatorship he's trying to create, and we're not going to respect the sham assembly. And so at this point, we felt like because we're not seeing any progress towards lifting up the Venezuelan people, and we see more of the power grab that Maduro is trying to do, the sanctions were another option to send him a message. Yes. Uh, Madam Ambassador, um, we saw an article in the Washington Post uh, about cutting the financial aid of Egypt. Um, do you have any concerns about the relation between Egypt and North Korea, and did you cut that financial aid because of this, the relation with North Korea, or because of the uh, situation of democracy and human rights? So uh, we have a good relationship with Egypt, and it's one that the United States wants to continue to hold. I think what you're referring to is the money that was pulled back due to um, the vote that they had on the NGOs. You know, we have always said that we needed to have the NGOs have the right to be involved, to act, and to be a part of that. And so we've expressed our concerns to Egypt. They didn't correct that, and so this was a reaction to that. And the relation with North Korea? Do you have any concerns about that? I mean, I, I think we've said all we need to say about North Korea in terms of the fact that we're obviously watching what is happening there. Um, we're waiting to see you know, if they're ready to actually uh, destabilize or denuclearize um, what they have, and then talks can take place. But we're, you know, I think we're still watching and waiting. Yes. Uh, now, on Iran, what is the next step that you foresee will happen? Uh, are you trying to convince the IAEA to be more aggressive, uh, to have a new language? Uh, what's your aim on, on Iran? So we didn't go to the IAEA to tell them to do anything. I went to the IAEA to ask questions. What have you looked at? What else have you not looked at? Have you had any issues? So it was more just to find out what the status of the situation is and also to support them, to make sure they had the resources to be able to do the job. This is a huge job that's been put on the IAEA. And while they have amazing experts, um, we wanted to make sure they have enough of them and they have enough of the equipment that they need. So it really was a fact-finding mission, and I will go to D.C. on Monday and report that back um, to all the things that we found out from there. Hi, Rosalind Jordan with Al Jazeera yes. English. Good to see you. Nice to see you. On Yemen, despite the Saudi ambassador's reassurances this week that the coalition is trying to avoid targeting civilians in their fight against the Houthi rebels, at least 55 civilians have been killed just in the last three days because of coalition airstrikes. Obviously, the Saudi coalition is under a lot of pressure to do better. Will the U.S. put more pressure on the Saudi coalition to be more careful in carrying out these airstrikes? And is the U.S. promising to not lobby the U.N. as it's preparing its report on children and armed conflict? I can tell you Yemen is something we are extremely concerned about. I personally had meetings with the Saudis and OCHA last week in terms of Hudaydah, of the airspace, of trying to get the cranes in, working on all of those things. We're extremely concerned, but we have a good, con we have a good flowing conversation with the Saudis to make sure that they understand what our concerns are and to talk about where we go from here. On Lebanon, on Lebanon. Yes. A new report by the IEA about the annual report saying that North Korea is stepping up its uh, nuclear reactor. Do you have any additional comment on that report that it, was just published today? It's a concern, and it shows that North Korea hasn't backed down. They haven't stopped what they're doing, and it is the reason why we continue to have our guard up when it comes to North Korea. Michael Sharp. Michael Sharp in the report on DRC, the, the Board of Inquiry report came out and basically said that the U.N. had done no wrong and seemed to be asking the DRC to investigate. What does the U.S. want to have done about the death of the two experts, Zeta Catalan and Michael Sharp? Uh, we've asked the Secretary General for an independent investigation. The last thing we need to do is leave it up to the DRC to do the investigation. And so we strongly believe not just for those two who served and sacrificed, but for their families and for the U.N. community 
to understand exactly what happened and make sure we get down to the bottom of it. So we are working with Sweden. We're going to continue to push. We're going to continue to fight for an independent investigation. Ambassador, thank you. Uh, so just some quickies. Uh, timing is everything. The Venezuelan foreign ministers in the building, have they asked to meet? Would you, should the U.S. grant a visa to President Maduro if he wants to come for the General Assembly? And which president will show up at the General Assembly, President Trump, with a teleprompter or without? What would you prefer? Oh, see, you like killed it with the last question. You get that, right? Um, okay, first of all, no, we have not been asked to meet with the Venezuelan foreign minister. Um, the second thing was, I don't know about that with Maduro, so that's, um, I haven't heard anything about that. And I think you're going to have uh, President Trump show up at the General Assembly. And I think you're going to have the president who did the um, bombing on Syria from the chemical weapons, the one that has gone against ISIS in both Syria and Iraq at record pace. I think the one that has made a very strong, smart change to Afghanistan to show that we mean business, that's the President Trump you're going to see. And that's the President Trump that we're going to continue to hear when it comes to these policy issues. Do you want, are you happy with the current French draft resolution on uh, the renewal of UNIFIL, and do you want uh, to insert the language as forceful to address uh, the uh, uh, daily Israeli violations? Uh, I know you are uh, very much adamant against Iran and Hezbollah, but you are not uh, talking at all about the Israeli violations to the Lebanese sovereignty daily. Can you address that, please? So what I can tell you is with UNIFIL, we are very concerned. I'm concerned because I was there. I was on the border. I saw it. Um, you know, when you look at Israel, they are looking at thousands of rockets looking back at them. There's a serious problem when you have Hezbollah, who has been bragging about their weapons in front of the TVs, have continued to be smuggling arms into Syria. We've seen everything they do with Iran. It's a real concern. And our goal with the UN is always peace and security. And we always talk about prevention. Watching what Hezbollah is doing in South Lebanon is not prevention. It is preparation for war. It's a matter of time, and we need to step up now. And I can't imagine anyone wanting to do a technical rollover of UNIFIL when they know that we are seeing a lot of violations taking place, and we don't need to be given terrorists a pass. Matter of time for what? Yes. Ambassador Alejandro Rincon with the NTN24. Following up on the sanctions against Venezuela, I wonder if uh, the U.S. government will also meet these new economic sanctions uh, with renewed swift action on the diplomatic level to meet uh, what we just saw today from the U.S. government. In terms of meeting them? Of new diplomatic actions against Venezuela, maybe? I think what you're seeing is you're seeing um, diplomatic, financial, um, situations that we are trying to work with Venezuela, we don't agree with anything that Maduro is doing. But we've said that for months. And what we've said is the way he's treating his people, the way he's trying to create a dictatorship, the sham assembly that we have is not anything that the U.S. can support. So we have had no choice but to turn around and do the sanctions to get their attention. We hope that they will see the error of their ways. We hope that they will go back to a democracy, which is what we hope for Venezuela, and we hope that for the Venezuelan people. in Latin America. He was also in Miami and met with some of the community leaders at a church. He tweeted this morning about Venezuela, and it has been something very important for the vice president and the president as well. Yourself from the United Nations has brought up this subject here at, at the Security Council. Do you think it's a way to try to get the United Nations involved, to try to get an envoy, to try to get a, a, a humanitarian uh, group that can do something about it? I think that we're trying to see exactly where we go. You know, what we wanted initially was to rely on the OAS to deal with this, but obviously they weren't able to, and then Venezuela left the OAS. And then we tried to bring up an emergency Security Council meeting because we were very concerned, and, um, you know, we had some reactions from the Security Council. They didn't think this was about peace and security. I think we can all attest to the fact that it is about peace and security. We've done the sanctions, and now we'll see if there's anything else in the UN that we need to do. But this is all um, moving forward. Last question. Yes. Are you thinking about uh, putting new sanctions against North Korea or putting more pressure on them? Is this the reports about the chemical weapons? 
Uh, I think there, there's reports about that too. Yeah. So we haven't had a chance to look at that, and we don't want to talk about any drafted reports yet. But certainly, we're going to continue to watch this. North Korea has been a situation we haven't taken our eye off of at all since um, the last ICBM testing. And so we're going to continue to stay strong. We're going to continue to stay aggressive, and we're going to continue to hope that they do want to come to the table and talk by um, stopping all the nuclearization and stopping all of the irresponsible actions that they've taken. All right, thank you all very much. Appreciate it.